Did you know that Loch Ness exists because it sits on a giant crack in the Earth's crust? Aye, that's the Great Glen fault line right there for you. It's like a geological zipper that runs from coast to coast that was unzipped 400 million years ago, right? This, running all the way from Inverness down to Fort William, is the reason why this lock is here. It's a strike slip fault line similar to the San Andreas fault line that we see today. However, ours is a lot older. There are small earthquakes that happen every now and then along this fault line. So it's not nearly as active. But if you feel a little wee rumble along here, don't go blaming Nessie. It's actually the fault line that's causing it. This strike slip fault line formed due to the collision of those two continents. Loch Ness isn't just famous because of Nessie, it's fiercely deep. That is 230 metres deep in some places, which is deeper than the North Sea. This has more water locked in it than England and Wales combined. The reason it's so deep is because of the glaciers. When the glaciers came down this valley way 10,000 years ago and beyond, they ripped apart the valley due to that Great Glen Fault. The rocks in the middle here are weaker because they've slid past each other, meaning that they've crumbled and turned into a rock likely to be myelinite. It's a fault rock that forms usually when you have two plates sliding past each other. So when you have ice seeping in and plucking away at the rocks and carving through this valley like a bulldozer over geological time is going to cut it deeper. And then once the glaciers melted, you had all this melt water which filled the glacial U-shaped valley and formed a lock. That's why Loch Ness is so deep. You never know, Nessie might be lurking in that Loch Ness fault line, in that Great Glen fault line. That's why Loch Ness is such a perfect U-shaped valley with long, steep sides and a flat bottom, it forms a perfect glacial trough. There's a boat passing. <laughs> I wonder if that guy recognised me. I remember being at Fingal's Cave once and like the guy canoed in and he was like, are you Scottish geologist? Aye. I thought you were Scottish geologist, man. That's absolute class. I love your videos. Fucking great. Oh, look at the ripple marks. You in a wee. Right. Did you know that the rocks at either side of this lock are ancient? They're actually older than life itself. Well, I'm talking about, you know, normal life. No, no, like, obviously there was, like, bacteria and that back then. But they're older than plants themselves and all that, and dinosaurs, and they're older than fish and stuff, right? The rocks south of us that are in the central highlands, the Grandfain terrain, are known as the Dalradian supergroup. Meta sedimentary rocks that were deposited between 800 and 500 million years ago, right? That's a lot of deposition as the rock types over that way. Now, these have been metamorphosed during that Caledonian orogeny, the same with the rocks at this side, which are known as the Moyne supergroup. Now, the Moyne supergroup's a lot older at 1 billion years old or 1,000 million years old, right? I nearly said a, nearly said a million years old. And these were similar. They were deposited as sedimentary rocks, right? But they're just a lot older and a little bit more complicated. So the Dalradian supergroup separated into four groups. It's got your Southern Uplands group, which is the youngest set of rocks. They're around 500 to 600 odd million years old. You've got your Argyle group, your Appen group, and then your, I think it's Grandfain group, I can't even remember, which sits at the bottom. 
the Dalradian shows a deepening of a deep marine environment, a deepening of an ocean formation, which is Iapetus ocean forming around 800 million years ago. And then it shows that this Iapetus ocean started shutting, meaning that you had like a combination of deep marine environments into like shallow marine environments. So it contains mudstones, sandstones, siltstones, limestones that have all then been caught up in that Caledonian orogeny where you had the two continents collide, which caused these rocks to fold into the rocks that we see them as today. They were metamorphosed and put under high pressures and high temperatures within a mountain belt, which caused them to change over geological time and allowed the minerals and chemical compositions to change over geological time. And that's what we can see today. These are the roots of an old mountain chain that once belonged to here in Scotland, separated by that Great, great Glen fault line, which was active during this as well, slicing through this crust pushing these rocks up the way and those rocks, is it that way? No, it's these rocks down the way and those rocks up the way. No, no, it's that way. These rocks up the way and these rocks down the way. The mine super group's very similar. Meta sedimentary rocks again, originally deposited as sand, silts and muds off the coast of Laurentia a billion years ago. They've then been metamorphosed into what you can see them as today, which is madness. The same again, caught up in that Caledonian erosion. Metamorphosed. But what do we have here? We have the amphibolite, which is the meta igneous rock. 